It's safe to say that probably everyone, at least once in their life, has dreamed of having a dog. I mean, dogs are man's best friend, aren't they? However, any beginner dog owner needs to be prepared before committing to a new puppy companion. We know that our viewers are very responsible people, or at least that we hope they are, and that they want to be prepared before welcoming a new puppy to their family. So in today's video, we decided to give you a little bit of insight into dogs' behaviors. These are five things that you should never, under any circumstance, do to your dog. Let's get started. Number one, dressing your dog. While there are fashion-forward individuals who also want to channel their love of fashion to their dogs, such a thought must never be entertained by responsible dog owners. If you have a dog at home, from a chihuahua to a lab, don't dress them. In fact, these things that may look cute and fluffy and bright can actually impair their ability to interact with other animals. In the animal world, it is animal instinct that when one looks bright, it is poisonous. So, how do you think the Labrador down the street might think when little Spot is wearing a bright pink skirt? I'd be a little freaked out. Also, you may not have noticed, but some of these clothes are very restrictive or even made out of unbreathable materials that's too tight for your pets, such that if you're not able to get it off immediately, the clothes that you put on your pet might actually make them feel claustrophobic. Number 2. Tapping on your dog's nose Many dog owners seek advice for trading their dogs on the web, and a commonly asked question is whether it's okay to tap on the nose or head. More concerning, there are people who actually suggest tapping the dog's nose or head as a correction for puppies who are nipping or dogs who are barking. Even when the tapping on the nose or head is done by dog owners in a playful manner to entice the puppy or dog to play, as innocent as this practice may seem, there are several negative implications associated with tapping the dogs in this way. In fact, the dog's nose is one of the most sensitive areas, riddled back and forth with thousands upon thousands of nerve endings, hence their super sensitive sense of smell, and it's an overall very delicate area. Repeated tapping to the dog's nose may trigger fear and self-defense in the long run, and the dog may at some point react offensively. So this type of correction for unwanted behavior actually heightens the chances for defensive aggression in the future. Number 3. Taking your dog's food away. There is a myth that has been floating around for many years now that you, as a dog owner, should be able to take the food bowl away from your dog while they're eating. The old school belief is that your dog should apparently be able to cope with being disturbed while eating. This may cause serious problems and is completely inappropriate as it can trigger dangerous levels of insecurity, defensiveness, and aggressive behaviors. When you look at an eating dog pack, even when the dominant ones have finished, they do not disturb another dog to go back for more. Think of it in human terms. Would you be happy if a waiter in a restaurant brought your food to the table and then, in about 10 minutes or so, stuck his hand in your mashed potatoes or took away that chicken drumstick you haven't got to yet? On the other hand, allowing them to eat but under supervision, with you standing close and never touching the food bowl, is the proper way to go. This technique helps raise their confidence around you, and reduces their insecurity and distrust, gaining you respect. Number 4. Ear Cropping Dog ears come in a variety of shapes and sizes, much like the different breeds themselves. However, rather than cherish their dog for how they've naturally come into the world, some owners believe it's a good idea to engage in the practice of ear cropping to get a more desirable appearance. This tends to happen a lot in breeds like Great Danes, Pitbulls, and Dobermans. The problem is, is that ear cropping amounts to nothing more than forced mutilation, so that the dogs can look prettier or fiercer. In fact, research has shown that ear shape has little effect on the risk of a dog getting an ear infection. At least 80% of dogs never contract an ear infection at all. So not only does ear cropping create unnecessary physical pain and discomfort for most dogs, but it can also leave them with lasting psychological trauma. Pups also use their ears to communicate, and cropping parts of them can hinder an owner's ability to understand what their dog is telling them, as a big part of their body language is linked to their ears. Ear cropping has already been banned in Canada, Australia, and many European countries. The US has fallen behind, and we think it's time to catch up. Number 5. Tail Docking Tail docking is the practice of removing a dog's tail. Just like ear cropping, tail docking is done mostly for aesthetic purposes. First off, dog tails can develop a neuroma, or nerve tumor. On top of that, tail docking greatly influences your dog's behavior, as dogs use their tail to communicate with other dogs. This came as a result of an Italian research in which a group of researchers outfitted dogs with special vests that could measure their heart rates. Then they showed dogs videos of other dogs wagging their tails. Sometimes the video showed dogs wagging their tails to the right side of their bodies, and sometimes to the left. The researchers found that dogs didn't really react when they saw a dog wagging its tail to the right side. They calmly watched as the dog on screen wagged away. 
However, when they saw the dog wagging the tail to the left side of its body, their heart rate spiked and they became visibly more agitated. In a nutshell, dogs are sensitive to the direction of tail wagging, which means tail docking deprives dogs of a natural way of communicating with each other. Moreover, newborn puppies do not even realize that their tail is actually a part of their body, but they see it as a toy. This is why they tend to chase their own tail when they are bored. So basically, with tail docking, you're taking away their natural toy. Thanks for watching. We will now start posting regularly, so if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing so you can be notified when we post a video. And don't forget to click that little gray bell. Thank you, and have a nice day.